Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and this is a tutorial on snapping and on work planes in Cinema 4D. First of all, what can you do with snapping? Um, snapping solves the problem of really, well, getting edges, points and polygons or hitting exactly on splines with other objects or with our tools. So basically when you have a situation like this where you have um, two objects and you want to connect them with a spline for example then I can try to eyeball this but it will be impossible in 3D to really hit, for example, this point and this point. While this may look okay in some situations right from the start, as soon as you turn your camera, you will see that you totally missed. And this is not much better in 3D when you try to go from the top and you click right there and right there you would expect this point and that point to have hit the target but it didn't in fact it's just lying on the floor and it's not even on the edge but it's nearby so that's a problem we can solve with snapping and there are several ways to activate and to configure our snapping. First of all, you can click here on this iron. If you just click on it with your left mouse button, you can activate or disable it. If you hold your mouse button pressed, your left one, then you can see all the options. Once you enable them, you get loads of more options for all the geometry details. Um, if you want to keep this options, then just go on this dot 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 field and that way you have the options um, accessible all the time. Other ways to access our snapping tools are here. Going to snap, you can see that's the very same menu you see down here. No difference. And you can always press the V key in our viewport and there is the same snapping options again. Another rather hidden place for snapping options is to be found under mode modeling where you can uh, define your snapping options and even some more things you don't find that easily like the snapping radius, um, detailed parameters for quantization and even some hidden thing called mesh checking. Many people will not know this. If you have a geometry like a sphere and you want to check your geometry once it's converted, that um, mesh checker um, here can colorize stuff that you may want to know. For example, if you have a hole in your geometry uh, those boundary edges will be highlighted and so on. But this is not about the mesh checking, this is about snapping and maybe some bit of quantization. All right, back to our example uh, of snapping. Uh, there are mainly two modes of snapping, namely 3D snapping and 2D snapping. And by default, auto snapping is activated. Auto snapping means uh, that it will be a 3D snapping in 3D view and 2D snapping in the 2D views like top, front and right in our orthogonal views. Now um, you can of course try what 3D snapping is if you just use like the Akima spline for example and the good thing is the snapping even works on parametrical objects that haven't been converted yet like our cube. So I can click on those points 
although it's not even a polygonal object. <clears throat> if I click on the first point again, my spline will be closed, same as if I had clicked here. So let's turn around the camera to see that it worked perfectly. That's totally precise. Um, so now what's the difference between 3D snapping and 2D snapping? 3D snapping really snaps to the point that's closest um, to your mouse cursor. So for example, I could click here and that would still work. While 2D snapping is a different thing. Uh, it doesn't make much sense in 3D view in most cases, but let me just illustrate it. Um, it snaps to those points but it as you as soon as you turn this around it will remain in the same layer so now I had auto snapping activated so let's go to 2d snapping to see the difference when I click on it now it looks good from our perspective but turning the camera around or going to the wire shade view you can see that it did snap from that perspective, but all of the points of my spline remain on the ground. While this doesn't make much sense in most cases in the 3D view, it does in the 2D views like seen from top. For example, if I have two cubes and I want to draw a spline between them, then I can use the 2D snapping and the vertex snap, which is snapping to all the corners of our polygons. Then I can click here, there, and there. And when I look in 3D view, then I can see those points really hit the corners, but they went down to their floor, if you like. 3D snapping, on the other hand, is obvious. If I click here and there, it snapped really to the point and not to some own um, kind of layer. Now, the snapping options can be combined. We could snap to vertices or edges or polygons, but I would recommend to keep it pure, to just choose widely where to snap because that's much cleaner. There will be no confusion. For example, if I click here and there, and then there again, um, they will be all sitting, all those points will be sitting right on the edge, but we didn't define where. If I want to snap them to the vertices, I could then move them up and I will see from a certain radius, it starts to snap right in place, right on the corner. And this, of course, works with, with every tool or with every thing I want to place. For example, if I have a new cube, a rather small one, and I want to make it snap there, then it says spline vertex snap. When I release my mouse button, <clears throat> I will see that the axis of my object sits right on the corner. Now, we still haven't tried polygon snap. Um, that's not much different. It will hit the surface, but not necessarily on an edge and not necessarily on <clears throat> a corner point. It will just make the points sit right on my polygons. When I go to linear spline, then you can see this looks really good would be good for wires, for example, between buildings. Now the spline snap snaps to splines. So when I have a Akima, for example, and I want to draw another spline, let's make it a bit more complex by moving some of the points upwards. Now I want to draw another spline between those hills, if you like. Then I can just click here and there. And now let's hit 
or let's rotate and we see this did not work because I wasn't in spline snapping. So let's do it once more. I just used control Z to go back and now you can see this actually connects those points. Let's move it and you can see I can really kind of flow along the reference spline. No need for polygon uh, snap right now. Then the axis snap uses the axis of the objects. So each object has an axis. The spline has an axis here. The parametrical objects have the center as um, their axis. If I convert the object and use L key or click here, I can move my axis and hit L again or click here again so it's not highlighted anymore, then this is my new axis. So if I want to snap this axis to someone else's axis, maybe this cube's axis, then I can just move my torus with that axis and make it snap right there. Cube, snap, like so. So when we parent-child this, put the torus underneath the cube, then this has worked as well. Let's just skip the intersection snap and look next at midpoint snap. So the midpoint snap obviously can only work on edges and polygons. So on edges, this would work like that. You have a spline and you want to sit right there, then I can just drag my mouse while I'm drawing the spline and wait until it's snapping to the midpoint. Then I can switch over to polygon snap, draw another point and snap right to the middle of some polygons. Like this. Another way of snapping is to be found here when you activate work plane snap. We're not actually using a work plane on our own first, but we can use the grid. You can activate it if you don't see it already with filter grid in your viewport. And um, then we snap to, well, 3D snapping is enabled. We don't need any other snapping. Then we can snap to the points of our grid. So we should, to make sure, activate the grid point snapping. We can also choose the grid line snap, then we are somewhere on those lines. And if you zoom in further, then you get those subdivisions. You can use them as well. So that way you can make sure you're on the grid lines or on the grid points. So now how can you define the grid? If you want to change the spaces between each line, there's the mode, view settings, and among back, you can turn on among world grid, the legacy mode, where you can define uh, the spacing of the grid. If you need something different, then you can just choose this. You can also highlight every so and so many lines, like each eighth line, for example. And you can set how many lines you want to draw in total. But if you want to turn back, just disable legacy mode. If you're looking for an Illustrator-like snapping functionality, um, which is magically finding the right axes somewhere in space, then try the guide snap combined with a dynamic guide and maybe even with a perpendicular snap because this is, for example, if you go to top, a nice way to create um, axis lines 
I just choose a new cube and in this case I want to snap on say the axis points so axis snap is okay and in conjunction with the guide snap I can just get here drive down there hint to that and then it magically snaps to both axes if there is a guide or if there has been a guide created then you can just enable guide snapping as well so for example I have two cubes somewhere in space with control click you can create a new cube and I want to create a guideline between two boxes and just go to tool guide tool click on the first axis and go over to the second one and I want to keep it like that you could um, even connect to a third object to create a plane or something like that but I will just keep it as a line like so and now they are located somewhere in space so let's see whether we are able to snap to that guide with a cubic spline for example I start somewhere then I'm on the guide I'm on the guide once more and I get off again so this works perfect too seen from top that's my first guy and that's the other spline so the intersection let's see whether it snaps to the intersection I activated intersection snap and there it is it hit the intersection lastly we can have a look at the work plane snap while we discussed the grid snaps already there's also a way to create working planes on your own for example let's say you have a cube with um, some extrusion and this is the ramp you want to create a grid upon then you can do so with the work plane tools either to be found here align work plane to selection would be the right one you can find the same menu here and here so align work plane to selection would look like this I activate the grid and now you can see we have one grid on the floor and the other one has been created here so let me just go back to demonstrate it again you click on a polygon for example because this has a axis this has a planar surface so I can then just say align work plane to selection or the other way around with um, this polygon here I can try the opposite align selection to work plane and then the center of it snapped right to the grid so now when I create new objects I can make them snap to the grid as well in 3D space if you want to get back then you can align the work plane for example to Y there is a camera work plane you can see here on top the planar work plane can be aligned to all axes yeah. 
And it seems like we can also, if we just bring this back to normal, if you have, for example, a cylinder which is turned around somewhere in space, then you can let the grid snap to the axis of this object. And even stuff like the array works then if you hold down Alt on this newly created grid with all the known functionality. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the quantizing function. We don't need any grids for that, so you can just say align to work plane Y or just filter it out. And um, the quantization means that tools you use, for example, moving, gets quantized. So you can see by those little numbers right here that it's only using steps of 10 units for translations. Same goes for rotations. We have steps of 10 degrees in this case. And I bet even scaling can be reduced to or quantitized to 10% steps. How can you define this function further? It's under mode modeling again. There's a quantize tab and there you go. There's movement. Um, it was set to 10 centimeters, the scaling to 10%, but we can also set the rotation, for example, to 15 degrees. That makes much more sense. So then when I have a cube and I want to rotate it by 45 degrees, I don't have to hold down anything like shift. I can just um, use the 15 degree steps and set it to 45 degrees that way. Okay, that was a quick run through the snapping functions, the work planes, the guides, and some other stuff like quantizing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.